What's up guys, I'm back with another tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you how to do that super sick swirl kind of warp purple. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna name it yet. But you saw it in the intro and yeah, let's get started. So as always, I have my clip and my song. Um I don't exactly remember where I got the clip from because I got this a while ago. It might be T1 Nate. Um, not sure, but yeah. And I'm using Welcome to the Party by Diplo, Lil Pump, French Montana. It's a pretty good song. But yeah, uh, first thing you want to do is you always want to time remap. I've done countless tutorials on this in my past videos, so you can look back at that if you really want to know. But I'm trying to make this one quick, so yeah, I'm going to do it real quick. All right, as you guys can see, I got a really clean, fast, slow, and too fast with the timing map. Um, I am editing in 24 FPS, so it is going to look a little choppy, but that's kind of the look that I'm going for. So once you have your timing map done, now you move on to the harder part, which, or probably the hardest part, um, which actually is not hard. So you want to duplicate your slow-mo part, pre-compose it. And then pre-compose it one more time. Open the pre-composition, and you'll see it's just your slow-mo part. Um, you want to put this little brush tool with the character, and you want to roto brush. Um, I've done tutorials on how to roto brush before, but actually, one quick tip is to always roto brush in full so you get the best results possible. But yeah, I'm gonna finish this up, and then I'll be right back. Okay, now that my roto brush is done, you can see that it mainly just depends on how you do on the first frame, and then it mostly tracks itself for the most part. Um, you're gonna have to fix it occasionally here and there, but for the most part, it should look pretty, you know, simple and nice. So you're gonna freeze it. If you really wanted to, you could have applied uh, what's it called, frame blending beforehand before the roto brush but i don't know since i'm working with a lower frame comp i think that it would look better without it so now you see everything kind of looks the same for the most part but if you solo this layer you'll see that it's just your roto brush and you see these rough edges you can actually fix those really easily if you just open up your pre-comp and alter the feather and settings right here so I'm going to turn down my shift edge and then turn down the contrast a little bit to kind of give it a little bit of that fade. And you can see the edges look a lot more smooth now. I mean, it doesn't matter all that much because you're going to be applying heavy distortion effects to it. So it's not going to make a huge difference. But as long as you got your character masked out for the most part, you are going to be just fine. Duplicate this layer. And now you want to apply on the top layer the white char outline right here you're gonna see it creates this really clean outline that like has glowing it glows horizontally um yeah it just looks really nice yeah now on the bottom one you want to uh, put my purple displaced char effect on and it creates that nice smoke by altering the hue set right right here just spin it around on the slider and it changes its color I'm gonna try to get mine to a nice purplish blue, like right there seems about nice. And you can see, just with your outline, this looks pretty crazy already. It's really clean already. Um, and now all you really gotta do is add the background, which is just black and white, the overlay, and the impact. That's pretty much it. Go down here and add my black and white background preset. That I will provide in the description. Just move the keyframes to fit your clip like I'm doing right now. And you can see how it comes in and the background fades out a bit. Your character stands out a lot more and it looks really clean. And then you add the overlay which I'll provide. 
and this overlay comes with all the particles and everything so all you want to do is adjust it to your clip you can time stretch it to fit your clip better mine's already pretty fitting so i'm just gonna lower it by like 90 or 85 all right that fits pretty well and you're gonna see that it's just the overlay it's not showing anything else put this to screen or add either one works i think adds a little too bright though so screen works perfectly for me and you want to place it under your character it's kind of up to preference but you could put it over or under it doesn't really matter and now all you got to do is add the little build up shake which i will also provide so you just want to make a new adjustment layer you just shake zoom in build up by me and your keyframes you might just have to adjust them a little bit which is just fine now you have this really clean effect that zooms in slowly and then boom now my advice is to put like a really heavy bright hitting impact just so um you know it kind of hides away that like jump cut from this to that so that's why i'm providing my displace glow shake transition i mean impact um it's a really really nice impact it's my favorite and you just apply it a couple frames before your, your impact and it'll clean it up really nicely and this is our finished result when you're sitting down to move packs make up this week up and check you see how clean that looks so Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. Go follow my Insta and my Twitter because I do put teasers and little edits that I do on there. And I also talk about what you guys want from me um, and when I'm uploading. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one.